back on the roof. Uh, so we got another cool call. This is our unit. Condenser fan motor's not running. It does have a low ambient kit, but it's like 65 degrees today, so it should be running. So I'm thinking maybe there's something up with the motor. So let's go ahead and dig into this thing and see what's going on. So here we go. Okay, so I got some gauges on it. These are our pressures. Now this is an R22 system. So it's definitely high. I just wanted to make sure that, you know, it's not that thing. So it should be running right now because uh, maybe we had a loss of charge. So the pressure was too low to turn on the fan. We don't know. I am feeling a little bit of heat. So we're going to go ahead and kill the power. We're going to make sure that the fan motor works, check the capacitor and all that good stuff. Oh boy. Yeah, see? So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and see if we can get to the electrical panel. And uh, don't have a lot of room to work with, but we'll do the best we can. All right, so we got that run cap out of there. It's really tight. The uh, fan is nice and smooth. So we're going to check our run cap and see if maybe it's out of spec. Uh, it's a 35.4. So we'll see. So we're checking the fan side of the capacitor. Uh, it should be 4. And it's right about there. And compressor size supposed to be 35, so it's, the capacitor is fine. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to bypass this pressure switch or the, uh, the low ambient pressure switch because maybe that's not functional. Um, we can open it out and see if it's open or closed, but it, sh it should actually be open right now. But uh, we'll go ahead and try just hooking it up directly and see what happens. All right, so here's the two wires for the low ambient kit, these two blue wires. So I've disconnected them. They were breaking this wire, which is the, I believe this is the common for the condenser fan motor. Um, so we're gonna try to run it direct, see if that fan comes on. Uh, but basically our issue is, is we don't have an output fan. So um, if the fan comes on, then that means that this is probably faulty. If the fan doesn't, then we got a bad motor. And then uh, we'll still test this and see if it closes, because it should with that high pressure, so. All right, so we powered it up. Our fan came back on. So it looks like we just have a faulty uh, low ambient kit. So that's got to get changed, but we'll see. Let's check our pressures. So we're going to let her run for a little bit, and then we'll go ahead and go from there. Uh, once she stabilizes, we'll check the pressures and see what it's doing. But looks like that's not opening for some reason. Okay, so I checked the uh, indoor wet bulb and all that good stuff. I calculated that our target superheat is supposed to be 10 degrees. Uh, I don't know if that's showing up on camera, but you can see our superheat's is like uh, 29. So it's definitely high. So that means we're a little bit low on charge. Our uh, target subcoolant for this unit, I believe, is 15. And so this is a textbook situation that the uh, system is low on charge. However, I am getting a 17 degree, or I'm sorry, a 19 degree split. I'll show you on the screen right here, a screenshot of the inside. Um, and I'm gonna get real with you guys. So uh, I get some comments saying that, oh, you shouldn't have done that, or oh, you should have done this. So here's the reality of the situation, okay? I know the system's low. I know that there's no insulation on there and that needs to be replaced. And I know that the uh, low ambient kit needs to be replaced as well. But the client doesn't wanna pay for it. They told me, well, it's cold, it's working. So they're not gonna add refrigerant. They're not gonna have me do that because they don't feel that that's necessary. You know, I mean, in a perfect world, we would replace this unit because this unit is from the 90s. I'm not sure exactly how old it is because the things come off, but I'm pretty sure it's at least a 90, 98, you know? So, I mean, realistically, this whole thing should be changed out, but you know, if people don't want to pay for it, they don't want to pay for it. So I'm not going to add refrigerant because they don't want to pay for R22 because it's expensive. They don't want to pay for that because it's going to cost about 100 bucks. And I know you're saying, oh, that's a lot, but, you know, that's including labor and materials and all that. Uh, and that's just an estimated price, and they don't want to pay for a low ambient kit, and, well, which is fine by me because I don't actually have one, and the season's over. But they'll be probably adding a new one uh, once winter comes back. But for the, for the meantime, it'll be fine, and the system is cooling, so they're totally cool with that. Wait, so that's uh, enough ranting for me. Uh, so we're going to call it good at this point. I'm going to make notes of everything on there, so if anything goes wrong, it's noted. Uh, so anyway, hopefully this helps you out. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching.